Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show, where we try to make sense of this crazy real estate market. Good morning, Jackie. I was not on Monday. I took advantage of the nice weather and went up to Lost Dutchman State Park with my RV. And I got to tell you, it's nothing like walking out the door with a morning cup of coffee and looking up at the Superstition Mountains. Man, it's so nice out there. And they have very poor cell service, so I wasn't able to do any data, get any data. I had my laptop, I had my camera ready to rock and roll, and I could not get it to connect to save my life. So anyway, enough about that nonsense. We're going to take a look at what you need to look at because right now is when we're going to see a lot of chatter about the rapid changes in the real estate market. The real estate market never changes rapidly, so we're going to look at uh, what you can keep an eye on to help you understand. The purpose of this channel is not to have an agenda and then find the numbers to fit the agenda. The purpose of this channel is to let you see numbers on your own here so that you can determine whether or not it's a good time to buy or sell or if it fits what you're looking for. But the most important thing today is, remember, YouTube changed some of their algorithms to where if you hit the like button, you get better gas mileage on your car. I don't know how they do it. It just It's amazing. So here it begins. The housing market is in the early stages of a substantial downshift. Home sales may drop 25% by the end of the summer, according to this analyst. This analyst is, uh, who is it? It's uh, Ian Shepardson, chief economist and founder of research consulting in Pantheon Macroeconomics. Holy cow. That's quite the title. So they're saying that home sales are going to drop 25%. Now, be careful. That doesn't say that there's a 25% price drop. It's just that home sales could drop. That could happen. Um, and basically what they're saying is the housing market's in the early stages of a sense, substantial downshift in activity, which will trigger a steep decline in the rate of increase in home prices, starting perhaps as soon as this spring. That's today. Shepardson wrote in a research note distributed Sunday. So that's one of many articles that you're going to see that are going to start rocking and rolling out there about how the market's going to change. And uh, if you've been watching this channel at all, um, you know that, that I don't make long-term predictions, but I can go out three to six months pretty safely based on the numbers that we see. And I can also tell you that um, in 2006, before the crash of 2008, there were plenty of flares going up showing there's going to be a problem. Today in our market, we only have... 4,513 listings and that number I think in 2006 before the crash was somewhere around I want to say 65,000 listings we've had 3,990 homes come on the market the past seven days of which 3,857 went under contract and the interesting thing is is price changes have gone to 1596 They've been rolling about 1400 Not significant, but some of the things to look for, and here's what I'm going to keep tracking in this market for you, is um, look at pending listings here. So pending listings are down a little bit. That's not a major shift. They've been up and down before, but pending listings will start to drop. If the market is slowing, this number will slow down. Ignore these dips because these are holidays. The other thing that's going to change is contingencies. Nobody wants to accept a contingency in a hot market. You know, um, I want to buy your house, but I can't buy it until I sell mine. And contingencies are just no bueno right now. And so you can see that number there. So now if the market starts to cool, sellers are going to be more open to accepting a contingency way before they consider a price reduction. So that's a key number to watch. And you can see that they used to accept them like crazy up here. There's a 160, 170 right there. And now we're down to what? Um just a handful. So those are the big numbers to watch. If we were to go um, overall right here, this red line shows um, the number of homes that went under contract and the blue lines are the number of listings that come on. There's not a whole lot of change there. I did put a green line here that kind of shows what is close to the average of homes going under contract. And if we start dipping below that line, and it stays there, then we can safely say that homes under contract are going to start declining. But what else do we look at? Well, who'd have thought we'd ever see a day where we'd look at a headline at mortgage rates at 4.66 and go, oh my God, it's the end of the world. Everything's going to crash. But here we are, 
4.66 on a national average. Uh, you'll find some mortgages higher, some lower. Make sure you look around. Um, don't just call and ask that proverbial question. Hi, this is Rick. What's your rate? Because it all depends. It all depends on how much money you're putting down. depends on your credit score, your debt-to-income ratio. So if you're calling one of these online people, you're just sending them a message saying, what's your rate? And they spit you back one that you like. Trust me and Pat when we tell you that that rate may have a lot of fees attached to it to get you that rate that they're quoting. So do your homework on looking for a rate in a market that's as volatile as this. Don't just go online, do a bunch of quick shopping, go, hey, I got one from blah, blah, blah. You've heard that commercial on the radio, Lone Falcon. <laughs> no, don't, says the wife. Number of price changes per week. I just alluded to this. This will start showing up after contingencies. So contingencies start to go up. People are more willing to accept that. Then you'll see price changes. Now, you don't see a lot of price changes where people say, okay, we've been on the market a month, let's raise the price. So it's always safe to assume when there's price changes that the price has gone down. Jackie says, I remember how exciting it was when we hit single digits. This will be an amazing rate. People just need to get used to it. For so long, 6 to 7% was the norm. I remember getting excited when I got a 9%, but I'm older than dirt. I It was before the internet, and I was living in Southern California, and there was no such thing as caller ID. So when your phone rang in the kitchen, you had to answer it. It might be your mom. And every night, we'd get two or three phone calls because rates had just dropped asking us if we wanted to refinance. And I... <laughs> I finally got to the point where I would just answer the phone and say, hello, we're very happy with our mortgage. <laughs> and they would hang up. That would work. So you can see here the number of price changes starting to dip up a little bit here. It says 435 for the week of March 13th. Uh, Desert Divas' 70s had high interest rates. Yeah, you're not kidding there. So you're looking at uh, these numbers coming out, and this one shows... Uh, what the week was. Another thing I want to caution you on, because we I saw it just uh, last week, talking about February, and they were saying that February sales were down further than the last six months. There were two issues, major issues wrong with that number. One, February to February was not down. If you compare this February to last February and the February before that, sales were up. So that was misleading. The other thing is, they said that February sales were down due to the rise in interest rates. Wrong. Because February sales, contracts that close in February, that offer was written in December and January. And interest rates had not gone up then. So there's always devil in the details when you see a headline. That's why we need to look at the actual numbers and things that are going on. And if there's going to be a crash, then you're going to be the first to know and say, ooh, this doesn't look good. But there has to be something that jumps out. I know there's one YouTuber out there and all he keeps going is, oh, this is insanity. I had this. I had to just make a comment on a channel and say, can you provide any data besides just the same tagline that says, this is insanity? Show me something. And of course, he never, ever answers me. I don't blame him. Pending listings. This is another number that you will see go down. Pending listings are a home where the offer was accepted and they marked it pending. And uh, here you go. We're at uh, 81.70. Last year, we we're at 79.50. So we have more. This number will change when the market changes. Tyler says, it's the combination of high prices and raised interest rates that's giving buyers a qualifying problem. Absolutely. And we're in the early stages of that, Tyler. And as we see this moving forward, these numbers will move. And so pending listings if more people can't qualify, these numbers will drop unless unless investor traffic increases. Right now, we're about 20%, which is really high. If the market starts to flatten, what's going to happen to iBuyers? I think they're toast. Um, so that's going to be something to watch as well. But there, again, we're not going to see anything change there until the velocity of sales changes. You're going to see for the market to soften, you need to think in the minds of a seller. You've put your house on the market and you've just gone through this aggressive period of, of massive appreciation. So your house is now worth 650. So you're going to ask 665. And that's when you kind of find out if the market's softening that 665 isn't going to fly like it used to. 
and so then you're going to have to reduce it now when they reduce it does that mean prices are coming down no that means that um that their asking price came down the house may still be worth 600 650 but they're not fetching 665 now because there's not as much interest so the price reductions don't mean that the average sales price is coming down it just means people are kind of getting off of their lofty tower and the other thing you see here too is closings by per month over list price this will change this will change rather quickly and it's looked at on an ongoing 30-day average and right now we spiked up we're at 54 percent we got down to 41 percent in december but again that's seasonal that's just the way december works so it looks like my mic's a little hot here and now we're at 54 percent this number has to come down before you start seeing any changes in the other numbers that i spoke of so imagine a market right now where you're going out and you're up against multiple bids and you start to see that go away. You see that the list price is starting to come down to more realistic terms. The bidding wars are starting to cease. All of these things are an indication that we're moving towards a more normal market. And then you will see that uh, um, possibly that inventory will really start moving up. And it doesn't go up overnight. It's going to take, it's going to take time. I'm going to try and pull up uh, the Cromford Market Index here if I can see if I can find it real quick. Um, and I'm going to go to the home chart here. Don't you hate it when somebody does this when they're online live and it takes time? So here's the chart. So it's still showing that the index is climbing, which means that inventory is still outpacing market demand. And here's demand. And demand has made a little turn here, see? So where, we have to watch this. Where is it going to go? How far down is it going to go? And then supply is still going down. And I think interest rates are going to play a really large role in supply. Because right now, look, just imagine how many people are sitting on a mortgage that's between 2.9 and 3.1, even 2.75. They ain't listing, folks. <laughs> so I don't know. Uh, uh, you know, they're only going to list if they have to move. And there may be some of that that's going to happen. But even in the over 55 communities right now, I'm seeing um, just really low, low inventory. I think I pulled up Sun Lakes uh, this morning. There's Normally they used to have, you know, I say normal. That's not even a good word anymore. They used to have a 125 listings in March. And, and they have 15. Um, that's unheard of. Absolutely unheard. What's that guy say? Uh, it's insanity. <sighs> He's probably going to reach out to me and just chew me a new one. So on another subject, how do real estate agents get paid? I found this kind of interesting. It's by Realtor.com. Uh, we all know, but there's some things in here that just aren't true. Huh? Let me move my, my mug over here. Well, some real estate agents are also brokers or associated brokers, positions that require extra training and licensing. licensing. Commission payments go to the broker who manages the real estate brokerage where the agent works. That's true. The commission is then split between the broker and the real estate agent according to their agreement. The commission split varies from eight, one agent to another, with the new agent sometimes earning smaller percentage of the commission than the experienced agents or the successful ones who sell more expensive homes and properties. No, not necessarily. There may be brokerages that look at your split based on how many years you've been doing this, but there's plenty of 100% brokerages where you get 100% of your commission, you just pay them a fee per transaction. So I thought that was very odd that Realtor.com, who's supposed to really be zoned in on how real estate works, would say that. And I thought that was, uh, I thought that was just odd. So anyway, so we're going to keep watching these numbers here. I like I'm going to always show you what the current inventory is. We're going to look at pending listings. We're going to look at contingencies, and then you won't be surprised. Just don't get caught up in all this wild news that's out there right now that goes, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes, because it's just going to happen slowly. And there are many of you out there that want to crash. I get it. You want to break. There are also many of us, like me, that want to get to a balanced market. I don't like trying to find a home for somebody and going out and it's a bidding war and people have to make decisions that they don't want to make. I'm hoping for a balanced market and I'm willing to see this pan out over time. But we're in uncharted territory. The Fed has to clamp down because inflation is just absolutely rampant. And like Tyler mentioned, wages are not keeping up. 
so they're not able to keep up with the payment. So to expect things to remain where we are now for the long term probably just isn't going to happen. But the demographic shift in the number of millennials that want to buy a home remind me of when I bought a home in the 80s. There were a lot of us, baby boomers, that wanted a home regardless of what it took. We just wanted that doggone house. We were tired of renting. We just got married. We wanted to have kids. So we went out and got a house. And we went out and got a house when interest rates were at 17%. There were more creative ways to finance a house, probably not the best in the world, but we went out and did it because there were a lot of us. Now there's a ton of baby boomers out there sitting on a lot of inventory and there's a ton of millennials that want to buy a house. So we really don't know how this is going to shake out. And Andrew says, won't rising interest rates continue to benefit the cash buyers? We cannot even get aggressive offers accepted versus cash buyers. Rising interest rates limits our ability to make competitive offers. Yeah, I mean, I don't see that going away anytime soon, but cash offers are going to decline if there isn't the appreciation rate that they want to want to get. And if, as we're seeing in the Phoenix market, where multifamily dwellings like apartments are starting to exceed demand by the time when we look at building permits, that puts pressure on investors to buy rental homes. Jerry says, bought a home in Ahwatukee for two twenty four dollars a square foot in February. Only one other bidder who pulled his bid the state sale, and two daughters who lived out of state were selling. Same model, just sold for 90000 higher last week. Yeah, prices are not going down. We're not seeing price declines yet. Uh, 4.6 isn't scaring anybody. And so chances are they probably were looking uh, when they bought that house, and they were probably at uh, 4.0 or 3.9 when they were buying it. That one just now registered. So you're going to see a lot of that. That's not going away anytime soon. The um, number of bids all depends. Uh, the condo market is absolutely brutal right now. If you're under 300000 that is a knockdown, dragout fight. Just absolutely brutal. If you see something for two hundred twenty, don't even think you're going to get that for two twenty or two thirty. It just, they just, the investors are going in, scooping them up, and it scares me. In some of these older units built in the '80s, if they start allowing too many non-owner occupied owners in this complex and it gets over 75 percent they're going to sell the whole building out underneath you they'll buy your place and they're going to turn them into apartments so that's a danger and something you really need to look at when you're buying a condo make sure you ask about the percentage of owner occupants if it's too high fha won't finance it but uh and neither will va but you can get a conventional loan on that Tyler says, if feds want to raise rates without hurting housing market, they need to offer same rates on 40-year mortgages to make up the difference. I don't think the Fed really cares what's going on in the housing market. Their, their job is to protect the dollar and make the dollar sound, and their job is to tamp down inflation. I think they've got some themselves backed into a corner, Tyler, and I think if they have to turn off the spigot and it hurts housing, so be it. Uh, I hate to say that, but... I lived through it before, and they could do it. 40-year mortgages, uh, you'll see some pop up, uh, but those are not good. From what I understand, the 40-year mortgages, you could be paying on them for 10 years, and you don't even start applying your payments on principal until year 11. So a lot of devil in the details with those things. One of the things about rising interest rates that the higher they go, the more creativity starts to show up. And that's where you really have to do your due diligence. That's why I say, don't you dare just click online and go, oh, they're offering me this. Make sure you know the details because in a rising market, silly stuff starts. And that's what I used to call 2006. I called it the silly season. I was living in a house down in Ocotillo. I said, you know, I've seen this party before. I've never seen anything like this. I've never seen this many homes for sale <coughs> and this many weird deals being crafted. And I saw that the number of people moving to Phoenix was not as high as the number of homes that were being built. Completely the opposite of what we see right now. Right now, we see way more people moving here and more jobs than homes being built. But it, it was just glaringly evident back in 2006, that the math was upside down. So before we crash or soften severely, you're going to know, and you're going to have plenty of time. So if you're thinking of selling, you don't need to panic now and go, oh my gosh, here it comes. It's not, not seeing it, not seeing it in the data. We're still looking at at least three months out that we're going to see price appreciation, so you're in great shape. Our selling season is in spring. 
uh, March, April, May, and it's actually pretty brisk in June. Uh, buyer traffic's pretty brisk in the Arizona market as well because our schools start at the end of July and people like to move before that. So stay tuned to this channel. Don't forget to hit that like button so you can save on your gas mileage. I don't know how they do it, but give it a shot. Thanks. Have a great day. Take on the rest of the week. Yeah.